Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and the 6.5 is live in Barcelona in the Ericsson booth. I would say in the Ericsson mini show. I mean, this place is incredible, Daniel. I mean, everybody's around, everybody's talking, looking at the demos. Yeah. This show is back. Yeah, soak it in, everybody, because uh, if you don't know how to get past security at the front <laughs> of the Ericsson booth, you right. won't ever get back here to see what <laughs> exactly. we're seeing right now. But this is an incredible experience. and. Uh, you know, we're going to have a chance to tour it and look around, uh, but yeah. right now we're going to have a great conversation about 5G, acceleration, monetization, platforms, so much more. Yossi, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. And you know why their security is so hard? <laughs> you know why? Well, the, we just launched the best uh, platforms in the world when it comes to radio. We have 10 new platforms for Massive MIMO. We have new products for in-building. We are actually showing here how to monetize 5G. So well, the challenge would be if you didn't have all the security, everybody would be here and nobody would have any room. So I, I get it. I, I feel you on that. No, but there's something about the exclusivity. There's something yeah. about kind of wanting to get in when you can't get in. I know. You know that isn't every booth, but this whole experience kind of makes you want to see it even more. And of course, when they're announcing a lot of good things and kind of breaking stuff and creating excitement in the market, uh, that creates a lot of energy. And you said something though, you'll see about monetizing 5G. Yeah. Seems yeah. like a pretty big part of the agenda here. Talk about it through your perspective at Ericsson. Yeah, of course, 5G was developed over many, many years. And uh, the idea is to, uh, of course, bring new technology that allows you to do new stuff and get more money into the operator system. So I think now we are at the stage, especially in North America, where 5G was deployed. And now you're saying, OK, what can I do with it? What is the new things that, the, that 5G can bring? If you look in reality, right. I mean, people are skeptical. Where is the money that 5G came? But actually, since it was launched two years ago, the revenue of the operator grew up by 10%. And if you look at their plans, they actually have different attributes that are associated with 5G right. capabilities that are actually associated with the plans. And this is just the beginning, because 5G, obviously, 5G Advance and other capabilities are going to come that will enable monetization. The stuff that is happening right now, everybody's talking about fixed wireless access, of course. Uh, if you look at the net ads of the operators, only half of them, or even less, is actually phones. It's pretty amazing. Right? right. Used to be only phones, now only only half of it. And what from the residual? Half of it is fixed wireless access. Great work by T-Mobile and Verizon. Now at and is also jumping into this. And the, and the rest of the half of it is actually other devices like wearable and tablets, etc. And all of this is enabled by the spectrum and the band and capabilities that 5G brings. So in the uh, green room, when we were talking to you, in the virtual green room, uh, you talked about the future, maybe some low-hanging fruit that's out there uh, for the continued build out of 5G. Can yes. you talk about some of those areas? Yes, I mean, look, fixed wireless access right now, the operators are addressing a specific markets. They need to make sure that there is coverage there. In reality, despite the fact that most of the population already have 5G services, yeah. actually we are only halfway of the deployment. There's so much more to add, so much capacity to add. Millimeter wave utilization is still on the way. And you need to use other tools to enable this. Uh, operators are looking into utilization of what, where you're going to put your CPE, whether you're going to put it in the window. That will increase by factor three, factor four, the addressable market for fixed wireless access, which generate fantastic revenue. So the company made a pretty large acquisition of Vonage. Yeah. And I think some people probably see it, and some people are probably saying, you know, why Vonage? Why is Ericsson making that kind of acquisition? Uh, but I know you see a fit with 5G, with monetization. Talk a little bit about kind of how you see that vision playing out and why that's going to be such an important deal in the long term for Ericsson. Yeah, so we talked about 5G. Coverage has been deployed, next, cap next capabilities are coming in, like network slicing, etc. But we really need to be able to enable these capabilities to come right. to fruition. So how do you do this? You need to start having the applications in the network being aware of each other. And, and how do you do that? So 
if you take, for example, Vonage is a platform company. They have a CPAS platform. They're using the interfaces they have for SMS and voice to provide additional services like two-factor authentication. They work with millions of application developers that takes these capabilities and get API to actually uh, have innovation in the application. But CPAS is limited to the interfaces it has to the network. What we are trying to build with a global network platform is to build the next generation of uh, APIs, which utilize way more advanced interfaces. And by that, allowing application developers to access one platform that gives them access to all the CSPs in the world and innovate on. For example, if you are a gamer and you want to have a higher quality of service with lower latency, you want from the game to right. actually ask for this kind of slice. And, and, and that's a way for the uh, application developer to innovate, but also for the CSPs to actually monetize on the, on the 5G platform they got. Yeah, strategically, I love it. And I think one of the biggest things we learned from even IaaS uh, and PaaS services globally in the last 10 years is you have to, as a developer, you really have to know uh, and focus in on those APIs that you know will make you the most money. So I like this because especially if you're trying to address a global audience, uh, this makes a ton of sense. The question I have is, when is the right time for developers to, to get involved? I mean, can they do it now, do it a year from now? When, when should they start engaging with you? So first of all, now. Okay. And we are already talking to them. Yeah. And, and what we are finding out when we start engaging with them, that they have needs that we didn't even dream about. Even today, I met one of our partners here and he was telling me about the need they had for an API. I right. couldn't have even imagine. And, and just like, you know, two-factor authentication was invented in a hackathon, the same way will happen here. Once we engage with the application developer, we will understand better what they need. The good thing from an Arizona perspective, on one hand, we will have the platform. But on the other hand, we are also sitting on the network technology. So we can also learn right. from the application developer what they need and we can make sure to put it in the standards, we can make sure to put it in our technology so we can, in the future, develop this API and give them these capabilities. And what you can do with software, once you can add that sort of army of developers, uh, is going to create such a big opportunity for what you'll be able to deliver. And by the way, it'll sort of reposition the company entirely totally. as how it's seen in the market, right? I mean, the critical role you play with your core infrastructure hardware to deploy networks is one thing, all of a sudden being seen as sort of the next disruptor in CPaaS and actually playing a part there, you know, see, that could be really a differentiator for the entire way Ericsson is seen in the market. Um, I do want to pivot though, so as you did talk a little bit about kind of core network build out. And so I think we're getting to the point where that first part of that initial network has been built out. Um, kind of where does it go from here, what are the opportunities with 5G beyond this kind of first build out? So first we need to con continue, of course. I mean, last year was uh, extremely accelerated and now things moving into more business as usual. But of course, the introduction of 5G SA. I mean, if you yes. use the 4G core, you will have, uh, in many, many cases, similar experience. 5G SA means way more efficient way of uh, running a network and significantly reduced latency. And latency becomes extremely right. important. I don't have to talk about it. Gaming business is uh, one of the biggest businesses we have in North America. It's, uh, if you look at it, it's bigger than, than the, the movie industry and, and the sports industry combined. More than 50% uh, of the gaming industry runs on mobile. Yeah. That, that's big amount of money. Big. And the platforms become stronger and stronger and you need to be able to accommodate that. The gamers are a paying customers. It's yeah. a big business. If you give them more capabilities in the device, if you give them, for example, lower latency that will give a better user experience, they will pay for it. And that's what we're trying to enable. 5GSA will enable network slicing, which eventually will enable the operator to define different layers of the network and allocate it to the different types of use cases. So we've seen a lot of announcements of cloud players out there, yes. the AWSs, the Googles, uh, uh, folks like that, the Azures, engaged in helping parts of, of the network, and I'm curious, uh, the future of your network, uh, uh, how is it cloud enabled? Yeah, of course. I mean, our, we started the journey 
to basically virtual our network function some, some years ago. And now we reached the maturity, and of course the, the hyperscalers and the cloud provider, they, they want uh, all these network functions to start running on their machinery. We are already doing it, we are collaborating with all of them. And uh, for sure, some of our customers are interested to actually, I mean, you saw the play that AT&T did yes. with Azure. So there is willingness and, and uh, a lot of operators believe that that's the way to go. For us, it's, uh, it's, it's very normal. We are, uh, we, our, as I said, our network functions have been running virtually for many, many years. So now it's going to run on a cloud platform. It will help the speed and scale, that's for sure. And we see that there's opportunity. Yeah. We're going to kind of coming to the end here, you know, see, and I really appreciate you kind of breaking this down, which is kind of a little bit of a bonus question with all the kind of, how is the customers reacting? What are you really excited about that's coming out of MWC for Ericsson? Well, I think uh, some of the launches of the new products that I mentioned before, but I think, uh, I mean, everybody talks now on generative AI. And they are saying, okay, and then it scales so fast, and right. how is that even? How is that even added into the network? I think uh, now everybody's using chat. In a few weeks, people will start using audio with, with generative AI. In a few months, it's going to be video using generative AI. All of this will be running on our. Could we networks. do this? Just like create an interview in the form of Dan, Pat, and Yossi. I don't know. You don't even need to show up. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. That wouldn't be any fun, I don't fun, know if though. you've seen it, but there are different chatbots that actually started talking to each other. I, I've sure. seen some of it. I'm just saying, like, at some point, could we do this from home? I don't know. I don't want to be, it would be as fun, though. Yeah, I like hanging out with people sure, like no. Yossi. Yo, Yossi, I really appreciate the time, and I really appreciate you coming on to the 6.5. We're talking about you know optimizing networks, we're talking 5G monetization, we're talking the future of the network and a brand new way for developers to get access to services that are very high bandwidth, uh, low latency, and everything in between uh, required. So thank you for sharing your insights and what you're doing with us at the show. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. We'd love you to watch all of the podcasts that Pat and I did here at MWC 2023. But for this particular episode, Pat, it's time that we say goodbye. It's sad because we're going to go through security and they may not let us back. I know. We'll have to ask nicely. Yeah. A great opportunity here to talk to Yossi. A lot of fun here at the Ericsson booth. But everybody out there, we'll see you all later. Bye bye now.